Hey, what's up? What's up? Yeah. Let's do yeah. this. Let's do it. <laughs> Match up. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good to have you guys on. We'll just wait. We'll just give uh, everyone a minute or so to jump on. But um, how was your day? How was your team called? Dominated? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, just went over. Over the basics. Belief in network marketing and yeah. Over. Told him how amazing Isogenics was compared to everything else out there and <laughs> the fact that it's the best in the world and nothing beats it. And uh, what did you uh, what did you get out of last time, mate? Did you enjoy it? Alicia, yeah, so did you enjoy it? It was epic. We saw Big Al when we first started three years ago, four years ago, however long it was. And just to see him again, it's just his language, really. Yeah. We saw, we saw him three and a half years ago, three and a half years learned ago. the basics and then went and did everything wrong and then went back to him last night. We're like, oh. Uh, we should have listened to you back then. Our systems could have been the icebreakers one that you did? Say again? Was that the icebreakers one that you did? Yeah. Yeah, I did that too. That was awesome. Yeah. Last night was different. Yeah. Yeah. It was really good last night. I, f- I think that the icebreakers book is is incredible but can be too much too soon if that makes sense there's too many different ways of, of saying it but last night was epic it was just like just this and this i was like oh. okay all right so <laughs> let's, let's get into it we'll get into it. everyone's jumping on now which is good they'll um they'll pile in they'll stay unmuted which is awesome um i wanted to welcome the incredible the incredible <laughs> lloyd and alicia guys these superstars and they are absolute superstars. They have the fastest growing business in isogenics right now. I would have to say in New, in New Zealand and Australia, um, they are absolutely crushing it. And what I'd love to share is that they are Start 1000 ambassadors, which, you know, which is incredible. Well, Start 1000, which is a six figure plus a year income. They're global achievers. They became they came number one, number one with Nashville. So we're off to Nashville on Thursday with these guys. So they actually were the highest point earner, earners. Yeah. Um, Shooting Star Award, the top twenty five income earners in ANZ, hundred K Club. They're six star. Six star <laughs> guys, for those of you that don't know, is 150 cycles a week. Um, that is their rank. And 150 cycles times six dollars. You do you do the numbers. But six star, four star golden um, crystal executive, which means I've created four executives in their business. I won't read the last bit that Lloyd wrote, but I just wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> and I can levitate. He said so, which. Uh, <laughs> Rise and float without any support from others. So that's what the Lloyd Oss reckon. So take a leaf out of his book. If you want to um, rise and float, then levitate. Anyway, I wanted to um, just give a massive shout out to these two because I've just come off their team call. They don't have to do this call for us guys, but they are going to give you some gold tonight. So let's give them a massive round of applause and welcome them to our team free call. We usually do a little bit of these ones. Let's go to the old Frazy. Frazy loves these ones. <laughs> Make it fun. Thanks so much for having us on and for that, uh, that introduction. Uh, they sound like heroes, those people, but they don't ask. We're just still trying to figure stuff out. Uh, so thank you for having us on. We're happy and privileged and honoured to be on with you yeah. guys. Hey, we, we just want to, I'm just going to roll through. Um, the guys are going to um, write down some questions, obviously, for the end, but um, mm. I've got some questions on my own here. I know that you said just keep it hot, which means that that's <laughs> yeah. coming. Um, but we would just love to hear your story, Lloyd and Alicia, if you could just share for us, you know, your story and how you've got to this point because you've absolutely crushed this business. But, like, where were you four years ago? How have you got yeah. it? You've dominated. We were, in SeaWorld, we were in the SeaWorld car park handing out flyers <laughs> for isogenics on cars. That's where we were. So if if we can be successful, yeah, Rachel's laughing. I can see for it. <laughs> if we can be successful in this business, you can be successful. Rachel, don't even pretend like you've never thought about doing it. 
quickly. I used to put flyers in shape boxes in Coles so people would go and buy OptiSlim and get an Isogenics flyer in the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See? And, so you build a, and you build a great business. So it works. So, yeah. But, um, okay, our, our story is we before Isogenics, um, I was in real estate, a real estate business um, and out of shape, not into fitness at all. At least was working paralegal mm-hmm. full time uh, for Bartercard. And we didn't need any extra money as, as such. It's always good to have extra money. We didn't need, we weren't struggling financially. We weren't in like a gazillion dollars worth of debt or anything like that. We didn't have any children or parents we needed to retire. Nothing of that, that um, gravitas. It was just, I was probably a bit out of shape. Very out of shape. Mm-hmm. Binge drinker, smoker, uh, too many parties, too many nights at Melba's. And Alicia was not far behind me. So <laughs> my sister reached out to us. Brooke Nielsen is my sister, Brooke Nielsen. And she said, I'm doing this thing that Andrew Logan spoke to me about. And uh, so what does it do? She said, oh, it, it makes you age better. Okay. And then she said, it's network marketing. So I jumped on the website, network marketing, just to make sure it wasn't a scam. And uh, I found out that it, it it was network marketing and I thought, well, it doesn't really matter if it's a scam anyway, let's give it a shot. And uh, we just said, we'll, we'll support you. She enrolled us, started on a president's pack. We both started on a president's got, pack. Got yeah. results. Just totally destroyed our first cleanse day. We had wonton soup, tom, tom yum soup. soup. Yep. Just totally messed that up. And uh, it's a wonder we actually got through our first 30 days, but it worked. We lost, I lost 14 kilos, you lost eight, eight kilos. kilos. Yeah. And um, got rid of my beer belly. And I remember just after day 60, I just couldn't believe the difference. I looked at my before and after picture. I just started texting it to some mates, saying, "Hey, check this out, check this out," just to wind them up, just to show them. And Brooke said you could earn some money if you could just share with a couple of people. So we just got one or two friends started, and that was it. We didn't really do much with it. We didn't go full tilt. We didn't. We didn't do much. We we probably just got two or three people started just organically, make eighty bucks or three hundred and twenty bucks. Mm-hmm. And um, then Brooke dragged us to in September of that year. We started in April, so September, so six months later. 2014 ICU. Was anyone there? ICU 2014. Nat Cook, Planet Platinum, anyone there? I remember that. Oh, awesome. Okay. Lots of freshies on the call. So that was like um, a peak momentum in isogenics where it was just like off tap. Like everyone was just, it was madness. It was like the height of Peter Kelly's, you know, um, booming business and... When we went to ICU, I remember I thought it was going to be people, you know, in suits and stuff, you know, pretending to be doing business like Amway. And I walked in, I was just blown away. If you haven't been to a corporate event, you won't know. But if you're going, you just get blown away. And then I found out that Jackson Parr was earning, he had a $70,000 a month. And I'd been to university and done degrees in law and MBA and, and I was earning decent money and he was just absolutely just obliterating me. And so I thought, far out, 70000 a month. And that caught my attention. And then... um. We went to UIA four weeks later. We just bought the tickets. Cleared to Perth from yeah. the Gold Coast. Yeah, Andrew said you should go to see this guy, David Wood. So we said, oh, we'll do it. And we flew there and um, saw David Wood for three days and walked out of there, walked back to my office, sat down and went, I'm in the wrong business. And that was it. I thought, Fuck, this, is, this is us. And then we muddled around for a year, mm. just trying to figure it all out. Got to director. Can anyone relate? They're just trying to figure it all yeah, out. Trying to figure yeah. it out. So we, we tried to figure it out and... Got to executive, um, just, I don't know how we got there, but we got there. And then what happened then? We did this we did this course or this program that Jen Patch put on with Steve Foxwell and it was like, I don't know, March to director or something. And and we just realized that we had- a millionaire in action. Oh, millionaire in action. We just, they, they told us to go and talk to 20 new people a week. And for us, that was just a like- A lot. A lot. We were like, what? So off we went to the shopping center and started talking to people in the aisles and stuff like that, sharing our story and end up having to buy some of their products just to talk to them. But I wouldn't encourage you to do that. But it just got us out of our comfort zone. And so we went from that to, to the next level. Then we started helping our customers do launch parties and we were driving up to Dolby, six hour round trip after work to do them. We're driving out to Warwick, we're driving out to, we're flying to New Zealand with Clinton Tash, we're flying into Sydney. We're, fl- we're just doing as much as we could in our spare time to help our customers have launch parties. And that's when we went up to three star. Mm-hmm. One of the top achievers met Greg and Rachel or Greg at, um, at Uluru. And from there we just, I don't know what we did after that. We just found some good people, developed them, yeah, fluked it. And now we're here where we are. 
And I feel like, you know, Greg, it's just like you know, people invite us on team calls now and they pull out all our accolades and they're like, you're absolutely killing it. Where did you guys come from? You know, you've come out of nowhere, but we really have been working behind the scenes and we really have been, like Lordy said, doing the launch parties, doing the sip and samples. And, you know, we get on these team calls and they're like, what's your secret? And we don't do anything different that they teach you at events. Like really, we were doing sip and samples and we drove to a sip and sample in Dolby after a day at work. And it's on a weekday and we sat down and no one showed. And we had driven like three hours to get to this launch party. And we were like, oh my gosh. And the one person that was supposed to turn up, her car broke down. So Lloyd said to the host, he was like, go and pick her up now so he went and picked her up and we did a launch party and you know she enrolled but never persevered with it but it was like it was that hustle like so it never looked beautiful for us we didn't do a three and a half hour uh, drive to Dolby and have a 25 person launch party we did it for one person but we did it again and again and again and um that's what we've been doing really honestly our launch parties have been shit from the start and we've <laughs> never been good at them and we're still shit at them but we still do these shit ones where one person comes yeah i've never had a 250 person launch party we've never hit momentum where it goes to a million cycles in one minute <laughs> we have literally just grounded out every single raw cycle since the last since we started everything it when when the business is running momentum Okay, we've grown so the, the company grew so fast in 2013, 14, 15 that that it shot way past the averages of growth. And so the company's decelerating, but it's still way above the averages. So we have to wait for it to come back to a relatively stable average before the next generation of leaders can take it to the next level. And so a lot of people will fall out of the business now because they feel it's the grinding period. But the reality is we're just about poised for the next level of boom because the next level of leaders are coming up. And a lot of them are on this call. So just got to stay in the game and stay in it because if you grind, and Jim Rohn talks about this, so in the winter time, just keep pounding it out. And when the summertime comes, it'll just be like, hey, and you can just make it rain. So I love that. I love that analogy. How good is that? So good. It's similar to like, you know, making the summer body in a winter. Yeah. It's very similar exactly to the same. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly the yeah. same. Like, yeah. Exactly. Work when you don't want to it. And obviously the fruit then comes comes from that. Now, quick question. Why do you love, just like really like, why do you love network marketing as a business? Let's just do <laughs> business here. Why uh, as a business? Just, just snapshot. Okay. Why do you love the business? You want to go first? I love the business for like lots and lots and lots and lots of lots of reasons. And Emily Barbara actually does an amazing, she has an IGTV um, channel and she's done her top three, four reasons why she loves network marketing. And you should watch that if you want to get really pumped up and fired up. But for me, it's obviously we get to do this together, which is pretty freaking cool. And we have a lot of our family members involved as well. And it's this, you have your own, you're in business with your family or you're in business with your friends, but everyone is independent. So no one has this like financial um, obligation to one another, which is what I really, really love. And what I love most about it is like the amount of effort you put in is the rewards you get out of it. Whereas when I was in corporate, it no matter how hard I worked, I still got paid the same amount. And whereas here is like you put in the effort and you get rewarded for it. And I absolutely love that part. And um, it's always a challenge. Like we're never... I don't know, we're never bored. We're like, what's next? What's next? What's next? What's next? What's next? And we're always, I'm so fulfilled and there's so much purpose. And I just feel like we, all of us on this call together, we, we have like this obligation, I guess, this obligation to go out and pay it forward and educate others that there is a platform for them to do what we're doing and what we want. And I know all of us on this call, we're obviously on here for different reasons and our lives are very different, but ultimately it's to create time freedom. So we can do more and we have more choice and abundance. And I feel like the only way we can do this as ordinary people is through the platform of network marketing. And I guess that's why I love it so much. What about you, babe? God damn, that's hard to follow. So um, what do I love it? It's better than all the other shit out there to earn money. Truly, it is the best way to earn money. There is no other better way. If you can find a better way to earn money, show me. Show me where it is. It doesn't exist. I don't think it exists anywhere. Uh, I can't believe we get paid to do this. How about that? I just can't. That's why I love it. It's uncapped income. It's, you can build it throughout the world. Every single person's a prospect. You can sell to everyone. You can empower everyone. You can save everyone's life, products, business. 
can travel a lot. You can win free trips. You can show people how to win free trips. You can build memories. You can you get your body in shape. You lose the beer belly. You you have residual income. You 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 can do it in the pockets of your life. You can have an active income and a residual income at the same time. You learn from the best leaders in the world. You you become a better leader. You become a better public speaker, a better communicator. You build better skills. You can involve your family. You spend more time with your family. Mm-hmm. Like, everything you can't do in a shitty job, you can do here. <laughs> if you have any other thoughts about doing anything else in your life, you are off track. There is nothing as good as this. Cryptocurrency is a load of bullshit. Don't follow that. FX trading takes time. It's another job. It's time for money. That's trading time for money. That's active income. You're trying to get away from that. No other business that I know of its traditional business lets you or encourages you to go to Fiji with your friends or to Nashville or learn from the world's best leaders. It, it just doesn't happen. There's nothing like this. It's very, you probably have two great opportunities in your whole life. So Warren Buffett's business partner, Charlie Munger, talks about two, two opportunities ever that you ever get. And he's a billionaire. He says there's two, maybe two. He said definitely one, maybe two. This is one. This is it. This is as good. This is the one. You can either risk it, right? And maybe you get a second one and let this go. Or you can just say this is the one. And maybe I won't get another one. And so I'm just going to pour all my soul and effort and belief into this one. Because let me tell you, every other marketing company out there, every other network marketing out, company out there is second rate to this one. In, in all areas. Isogenics pays out 50% of its profits as compensation to our associates, 50%. The average is like six. Do, do you ever know who Jimmy, Jimmy Smith is? He's the highest, he's earned 70 million with Isogenics. When his son-in-law, Tom, and him first found Isogenics, they had 37 years of network marketing experience. And they went over and Jimmy rang him up and said, okay, hey, Tom, come look at this. He said, man, I'm done. I've earned 150 grand a year. I'm just I'm burnt out. I'm done with network marketing. So I've come over, went into Jimmy's house. Jimmy said, check this out. And Tom said, are you freaking kidding? In his, in his New York accent, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> you can earn 15,000 a week in one business center with this company? He's like, yeah. He goes, how are these guys going to be around in three months? He's like, who gives a shit? Let's go make a million bucks and get out. That's what he said. So they went in and Jimmy Smith has earned 70 million with us. 70 million. They were like recruiting from USANA and Arbonne and these companies and they were getting them and they've come to Isogenics and made millions. Mm. This is it. There is nothing else. Do not let people on Instagram tell you otherwise. It's all bullshit. They're not making the money they think they're making. This is the one company. So make it happen in this company. And make it happen for 10 years if you have to. This is your number one opportunity. Yeah, this is so, so gold. If everyone is, like everyone on this call, they're just, they're so awesome, right? And obviously the people watching the recording, because we'll have heaps watching the recording as well, but they're all here wanting to hear that inspiration, wanting to hear, is this a real deal? Is this the spot? You know, we have people on here that have been in network marketing, you know, for over 10 years in other companies. And they're just like, this is it. So we love that. Now, next question I would love to share. Next question, next question I would love to ask. Product of the product. How important is that for you guys? Because let's face it, you guys look smoking, right? So... (laughs) Okay. You do scrub up well, guys. So you do use the products to their nth degree. And I think that's really important. So can you share with everyone how important that is for you and your business and your mindset? Using the products? So you broke up broke up a little bit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, using the products as as a being a product of the product. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, the best part I feel about being aligned with a health and wellness company and having products, weight loss products as our product is being a walking ambassador. And 
it's just that's you're you're a billboard you're a billboard walking around so to answer your question greg you do have to be a product of the product 100 percent. because i feel as though when you're in conversation with someone too if you're not using the product and you're not feeling good within yourself people on the other end of the phone or people on the if you're on a coffee catch-up they know they know they know that your intention is not all there because you're not in you're not congruent with what you're doing so I do a cleanse every single week and I've done a cleanse day every single week since I started this program. We have a shake for breakfast more or less every single morning, maybe one morning of the weekend we'll go out and have breakfast. But I really feel as though being a product of the product is so important. And Jo Moll spoke about this at NICO and I've never forgotten about it. And she said, if you're feeling like you're in a slump or if you're in a funk in your business and you're not getting enrollments or you don't feel confident talking to people, she's like, do a nine day cleanse, do a nine day cleanse, put the products in your body and remember what you felt like at the beginning. Like when we first started our first 30 days, 60 days, we felt amazing. We felt amazing. People noticed that we were bouncy, we were radiant, we had the glow. And so going back and doing another 30 day cleanse now, even if you're like two years into your journey, three years into your journey, or maybe even one year into your journey, Doing another 30-day cleanse is so important too. So you have empathy with your new cleanses coming in. So you can you can remember what it's like doing a 30-day challenge because it can be so easy being a, a cleanse coach on the other side going, oh, you'll be fine, babe. It's just another week. It's just a weekend. <laughs> but going and having that empathy and doing it again is so important so you can feel that, feel the way that your customer's feeling when they're coming in. So um, 100%, you've got to be, a, I feel personally, you've got to be a product of the product. It gives you more material to post on Facebook. You can, um, people see you. If you haven't been to a, a, seen a friend in a while, they see you and they, they notice. And it's a great conversation starter. <laughs> Just one small part. I would say the transformation that I went through personally, I feel really launched me into being able to enroll lots of people in the business and get it going. So one thing you have to remember is marketing is storytelling. Marketing is storytelling. And stories, as what Al said last night to us, stories are like crack cocaine to the human mind. So if you're not telling a story on Facebook of a journey, you're not going to get the engagement and inspire people to join you. So when I went into the products, my first story was losing my beer belly. That was my initial story. And I pumped that out and got people started. Then I went from that and to win, I went to win a natural bodybuilding competition. So I went and worked out hard for 16 weeks and built that story and then and blogged it on Facebook. And then it inspired people to get started. And, so there's stories that you create and so you either you either go through the hard yards of trying to develop your language skills for many years to get people into the business or you go and work your ass off in the gym but either way you've got to work your ass off at some point if you get in that shape you'll inspire people they'll come and you can get many stories we've had i think i've got 50 before and after photos yeah you know heaps yeah so you don't just have one you have face shots you have all sorts of stuff so yeah just develop a story so yeah, you have to use the products to, to have the story. Yeah, I love that. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> ninja tricks for connecting with people. Alicia, what is your ninja tricks to connecting with people? You, you guys are obviously very, ama- like really, really good with social media. Let's face it. If anyone follows you guys, you're really good at social media. But what is your ninja trick? How do you connect with people? How do you get them into your world? Okay, um, if you scroll back four years ago or three years ago, you know how Facebook has those memories that pop up on this day? It's actually quite cr- cringeworthy what we used to post. So you may look at our Facebook now and go, you're amazing at Facebook posting, but it's been a journey and it's been a journey of self-discovery and just trial and error and test and measure and just initially I started following Isagex leaders that I resonated with from events. And then that's where I got inspired to um, blog my journey. And we just get better and better and better, I guess. Um, But my ninja trick with connecting online is, so your Facebook page, like my Facebook page, it's pretty much my shop front. And I don't expect to post something on Facebook and for someone to send me a private message asking for more information. When I first started, maybe two years ago, Two years ago, three years ago, people used to message me, hey, what's that weight loss thing, blah, 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 blah. And that was from a number of reasons, like Facebook algorithms have changed. People know about what I do now. So my Facebook page is pretty much just my branding, my shop front. What the magic 
happens behind the scenes. So the magic is happening in a DM message connecting um, behind the scenes, not actually on my Facebook page. So when I do connect with people, they go and have a stalk of my Facebook page. They kind of get an idea of what I've been doing and whatnot. But I love to connect with people. Um, what do I like to do? Like I connect with people through like Facebook groups and stuff like that. And when they accept me as a friend, the, a ninja trick is I go onto their profile and I will click on the button that says see first. So whenever they post something on Facebook, they're the first thing I see on my newsfeed in the morning. So Facebook will do that for me. I'll open up my newsfeed and it will be prospect, 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 like people that I would like in the business and I can just pour love into them, pour value into them. And then I'm having that conversation in a DM message as well. Um, I was going to say something about that. One thing that I just really want to clear up too is don't log on to your Facebook page your newsfeed and have isogenics people like we love each other we're all part of this amazing culture but we go onto facebook to obviously connect with new people to obviously bring them into the business as customers or business builders or whatever so um, my number one tip for you now is if you're currently logging onto your facebook and all you see is isogenics post you know someone from an isogenics team cross line up line down line get rid of that get rid of that and you can do that in a number of ways you can create a whole new page just for your team, um, I would recommend you clear that up. Maybe like unfriend, unfollow some of those people so it clears up your newsfeed. But um, um, do you have anything to add to that? Because I could go on. Ninja trick for connecting. Uh, not only that if we're out and about connecting with people, we just try and add them on Facebook. Um, at least it's pretty good at that. And connecting online. So online dating. Not that I've done a lot of that, but <laughs> it's like online dating. If you want to connect online, you just have to go and build some rapport and yeah. then just <clears throat> ask for a referral. That's the easiest way to do it. Don't don't complicate it. Just ask me if they know anyone who needs to get in shape or Yeah, that's it. That's probably my number one ninja trick. Go in for referrals every time. First off, don't even bother asking for a direct ask. You just get shut down. Yeah, yeah. Connecting. Connecting, yeah, love it. How do you ask for referrals, right? How do I ask for referrals? How do you, Rachel? Um, I say, uh, I would say something like, um, uh, let me have a think. So, referrals. I would say something like, look, uh, hey, mate, I don't know if you're watching my Facebook. I know it may not be for you, but do you know anyone who needs to lose 10 kilos like I didn't lose my big belly before summer. That's how I would do it. And then, yeah, love that. And you just stay in contact from there, yeah? Yeah, like I think the follow first thing is really good. Like if we're talking to people online um, and we're connecting with them, we always do follow first. So whenever they post, we just, um, we just, we're just on there. We're giving them value. Well, I'll ask you the question. When someone comments on a photo that you've uploaded on Facebook, do you look at that comment and go, awesome, I like that person a little bit more, right? It takes that little bit of an, more of an effort for someone to comment. Likes and stuff, you're like, oh yeah, I've got like 50 likes. It's like a collective now. But when someone actually takes the time out to comment, you're like, oh, I like this person. And that's why it's like building that relationship. It's such a, it's such a I guess, underutilized thing that we're not, utilizing on facebook so yeah definitely start commenting and pouring love it, it's into, just value like yeah. giving people value so going and commenting on this stuff they'll just they'll feel it's valuable i don't think for that value and that's as easy as it is beautiful awesome now money mindset money mindset you obviously started for yeah i want to lose 10 kilos and lose a beer belly and you know help my sister out etc mm -hmm. but it changes along the way right you know, you develop, both of you developed, um, and mentally you change. It's like, okay, how do you share the business? How have you worked on your mindset, your money mindset, to not feel like you're selling somebody, feel like you're making money off someone, but actually feeling like you're changing someone's life? Oh, look, everyone, everyone has a fair participation shot at the compensation plan like and it's not like someone's holding a hot potato they're holding a great product in the hand they bought 
I don't, every business, every business, you make money off people. Your friend's got a coffee shop and you go in there and buy a coffee, they're making money off you. This is no different. I don't, they don't, it's not, it's a business. Okay. The, if you've not been in a business before, this is really new to you. If you've been in an employment role, then it's going to be weird that you're selling stuff and you just got to go through that. You just got to go through the experience of being a business person. Read the books by Robert Kiyosaki about the business of the 21st century and um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad and read books by um, Michael Gerber called uh, The E-Myth Revisited. Read those books. Like, just sink your teeth into business books and, and Tim Ferriss and read those guys and it'll bring your money mindset right up and go to the Isogenics events and David Wood will bring your money mindset up. The thing is that this vehicle is unlimited. What is limits, what limits it is the action you put into it. And so for example, if you're talking to one person a day, just 10 exit. So talk to 10 people a day. People want to know how you get more successful. You just 10 X your business. And there's a thing on it by Grant Cardone called the 10 X rule. And people underestimate the sheer activity that it takes to actually get their business off the ground. It's like the rocket. It takes, like 98% of its fuel to get it one inch off the ground. Not, like all of its petrol to get it one inch and then like zero, not like one or 2% to put it into orbit. It's not as much. So just rip the band out off quickly and just 10 X your whole business. And the way to do that is you have to, you have to become a machine. Okay. So you have to get rid of all this bullshit about, oh, I'm not congruent on all that all that woo-woo shit, this, you're, you have to be a business person, okay? Now, do, people say, oh, you're a red, and, but I'm telling you from a business person's standpoint, what makes businesses great are their systems, okay? And what, what works in business is its people and its systems. So if you have to become a storytelling machine, that's what you have to be like. You have to work your text replacement so that you're not sitting there writing the same thing over and over again. You have to systemize things in your business so you can talk to 10 people a day okay and you'll feel like a machine and you'll feel like when you're coaching your people you're just coaching a machine stuff but this is how you actually scale a business you scale it through systems okay when you first start out you're doing non-scalable things like having a coffee catch up with a cleanser and having a launch party with one person and all this stuff's non-scalable like oh my god how am i going to ever get this many people but over time you'll get lots more lots more lots more lots more but the more people you're talking to, two things will happen. If you talk to lots of people, you won't care about what they say. You will have forgotten who you've spoken to. I get messages back. Like, I don't even remember saying that message to that person. I mean, like, I'm in burn mode. So, like, and I don't mean that like burning people. I'm asking for referrals and stuff. I'm doing it in a nice, elegant way. But you have to be talking. It's like going on playing five girls in the, in the field instead of one when you're single, right? It's like, you know, it's not going to, you're not going to like obsess over them. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing. So go and talk to lots of people. And the other thing that will happen, the second thing when you do that is this, you must release yourself from the outcome of the conversation. It is, it's none of your business what they decide. The only thing you can control is the input. You cannot control the output. You can't. So Herb Cepeda, who's the second highest income in the whole company, we're in Hawaii, I sat down next to him and he said, we teach our people to release from the outcome. He said, there are thousands of people. I'll show you. And he said, hey, he said, oh, excuse me, waitress. Um, has anyone offered you an opportunity yet? She's like, what? He goes, has anyone offered you an opportunity yet? Because I think you've got fantastic potential. I've seen the way you're working here. You're really good. You'd be really good in my business. He went straight in. He said, I don't give it. And he enrolled three ultimate packs while he was on holidays in Hawaii. You, you have to just flex the muscle. It's not about getting a result or, or a yes, rather. It's just about flexing your muscle. So, for example, if I'm walking to my car, I'm probably shooting out an Instagram message asking for a referral. And I'm doing that on the way to my car. Like, if you want to compete at the highest level in this business, you've got to start competing at the right level. It's an obsession for a period of time. And so I'm sure Greg and Rachel and Rachel uh, have all shown you this type of behavior. You have to adopt it. And you have to go out there and just send stuff and not worry about the outcome. I was talking to a guy in Belgium today and I was sending like video 
appointment setting as a test. I was like, oh, this guy's in Belgium. We're in Belgium. I'm just going to send a video asking him for an appointment. And I've never done that before. I just decided to try it because I don't give two shit. I don't, I don't care if he says yes or no. What if I don't test it and use it and flex it? What's going to happen? And he said, oh, that's, he said to me tonight, he said, oh, that's really funny. Um, sending me a, a, a video appointment. That's still not going to swing it. I'm still skeptical. You have to get to convince me. So it didn't work, but you know, I'm still having these conversations. So just talk to more people, let go of the outcome. Go and get as many no's as you can and just get a, get no's. Just go get heaps of no's, you know, just do that. You I have- feel as though that was like the, the, the pivot in our, in our business, in our life is when we did that MIA with Jen and it doesn't matter about the course, but the fact that they set that KPI of going and talking to 20 new people a week. And for us back then, that was a lot. Like that was a lot of people were like, oh my God, 20, how are we going to do that? And our 20 for us is nothing. It's nothing. But we had to go through that and we had to speak to 20 people and we had to get to the end of it. And then the following week, they set another task. They're like, speak to another 20. I'm like, oh my God, we just did our 20. Oh my God. Okay. But by the end of it, I think we had spoken to 80 brand new people. And it was just the power of that 20, 20, 20, 20. That's 80 when we looked back. So for those of you on the call, you might be going, oh my God, 20, how am I going to do that? But I challenge you, like we challenge you if, you know, if we gave you anything to take away from this call tonight, it's like, let's set the intention to share your story, your story with 20 new people this week with releasing from the outcome. And that is the point of the exercise. The point of the exercise, and we train this with our team as well, it's, it's not to get a yes. It's not to get a yes. It's to go out and get a no. Because if you're going out and you're getting 20 no's, at least you're having 20 new conversations. And guess what? If you're sharing your story with 20 brand new people, they may say no now. But in six months' time, when they want to change something in their health, their energy, um, extra money, whatever it may be, your name is going to be the first one they think of because you shared your story with them. So even though you don't get the yes now, you could potentially get the yes six months later. And even if they do say no to you, which will hurt, I promise it will hurt. The first few no's sting a little bit. They don't, they don't hurt me now, but I've grown into that. That's when you enter the referral. Hey, I know it may not be for you, but do you know anyone who wants X, Y, and Z? So it's your way out. It's just like, next, like, next, thank you. It's not for you, but do you know anyone? Awesome. Awesome. And personal development, do you guys do it daily? <laughs> oh, I man. live with Lloyd. No. <laughs> um, daily. It's not um, we don't know you guys on the call, so I'm just going to ask you, do you do personal development daily? Yeah, so here's the thing. Like, like I was reading Rich Dad Put Up when I was 15. So I've always been invested in myself. I don't know where I picked that up, but I knew that if I had more knowledge than what I had yesterday or more knowledge than the guy next to me, I had to be 10 minutes ahead of him, I'd win. I just, I just knew, I just had had that in me. I just knew, I thought that makes sense. So I was a proponent of those materials early, you know, like George Gleason's book, The Richest Man in Babylon. You've got to read that, those, those basics. They are timeless. And so read those books. There's a plethora of books that Greg will be able to tell you uh, what he's read. Just pick them up one at a time and read them. That's the most basic elementary personal development you can do. And in your head will be these voices telling you this stuff. Like I think in Warren Buffett, I do it. I walk around, I'm like, what would Warren, I just have this in my head all the time because I studied him for like 10 years and I just think like him. And I think like lots of people we learn from, I think what would Tony Robbins do there? What would um, uh, David Wood do? David Wood do? What, what would Brett would, do? What we would do. Brett Davis do? What would, uh, what's uh, Gary V? Like Gary V's huge, like follow him, get his mindset. He's got calluses in his mind that you want to adopt. The way he thinks and operates and speaks is how I speak to myself in my own head. So I get up in the morning, I look in the mirror and go, are you doing your best today? You can do better. Let's go. Pick up the shovel, get to work, do the stuff you hate, get up early. Do, I, this personal development is books, it's audios, it's events. It's going to events. You just go to the events. Not everyone at the event spends $10,000 a month, but those earning $10,000 a month are going to every event. Okay, so if you ever want to be in the $10,000 a month category, you've just got to go. Even if you're not earning much money, you've just got to go. That's a huge thing because you'll develop this, the rhythm 
the, the, the words, the language, the, God, we went to a UI in, um, I don't know where it was, no, I forget which one. And we weren't going to go. We thought, we have to go, we have to go. And we did. And we learned something from Gabby Dean just about how she was developing executives and all. that was a one breakthrough we needed. And so you get it in so many different ways and shapes and forms and things. And God, you take away everything. Lara Nichols shared something at a city way and it just changed our business. So that's the personal development we do. Outside that, go to external personal development events like Tony Robbins. I mean, Rachel's huge on that. Mm. Um, yeah, pour yourself into it for sure. But don't, don't, don't think that you're doing business when you're doing personal development. Yeah. The best personal development you can do is going and getting rejected in your business. Go and create the calluses in your mind, pick up the shovel and just hammer yourself. You've got to get punched in the mouth day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out. And so you're just like a boxer and you just get conditioned. Go and condition yourself. Getting the nose, getting the rejection, it just builds resilience. Resilience, yeah. Resilience to keep going. And when that happens, that's growth. And growth isn't fun. Like some people are like, I want to grow. Here we grow again. Like it's, growth it's, sucks. It sucks. But when you come out the other end, you're like, that was pretty fun. Like, look how far I've come. But as Lloydie said, like you've got to go. And Gabby says it like have the adversities and stuff like that. And that is getting the nose. That's the, that's the, the, the crap part about it. But you've got to go through it and just know and feel confident that you will get nose. You will. It, and, re- and it's, yeah. And no, like um, it's going to take you time to develop this mindset. So give yourself time. Give yourself the two, three, four, five, six years. It's okay. This is the best journey you'll ever go on. There is nothing better to remember. So you either go on this journey or you don't go on any other journey. So you may as well commit to it for 10, 20, 30. We're going to, be, we're going to retire when we expire. And who knows how much personal development we're going to do. But just be, let fear be your compass. If it's going to scare the shit out of you, go and do it. Okay. If you've never been to Toastmasters before and you're scared of public speaking, bite the bullet, go to Toastmasters. It's $5 every fortnight. Go to it, stand up in front of people and just cop it sweet on the chin and just do it day in, day out, day in, day out. And we did that for two years straight and people say, oh, you're so, you know, you're so confident when you get up. It's because we went and freaking did it for two years. They weren't with us when we did it. They weren't sitting there going, how the fuck am I going to introduce myself in this? I'm scared shitless. They weren't there for that. They don't ever see it, but that's what happens. And so go and... Go and shit yourself a lot. It's what will actually grow you. Man. Is that good? I love that. This is it. This, <laughs> this is, is, is the it. and the real. We want to know. <laughs> we want to know what you've been going through because everyone on this call needs to hear the grit. Because people don't hear the grit enough on the stage. And that's the thing is people go to events and they watch people walk across the stage and they get the nice medallion or whatever it is. We get medallions? <laughs> I get no, something. We get, we get a little. Get something, right? <laughs> something around the neck. I don't know. They don't hold up money. Like <laughs> uh, the thing is, people see, they don't see the story. They see the glory, right? And it's so good. And that's why I loved having you guys on tonight because I knew right. it was going to be raw and real. Right. Can I add one thing? Can I have one thing? Just, uh, I think this is probably the, we often talk about this to other, with other teams and they seem to uh, receive it well. What kills people in this business is when they're going through the process of the build, they give up leisure time. You have to be okay with that. We sit here in our house and on the weekends I look out and there's everyone jet skiing on the weekends. You've just got to remember that that is how it's supposed to be. You're not supposed to be at leisure all the time. You've got to be doing the grindy stuff, okay? So don't look for leisure, look for the work, okay? And the other thing is that um, when you're building the business and you're sacrificing, sacrifice is what leads to success, okay? So um, when you're on your phone a lot and you're doing things, people are going to say to you, oh, you're always on your phone, okay? That's a, what we call a success flag. Instead of thinking that's negative, think, oh, that's awesome. Oh, I must be on the right track, Okay. If you're sitting on the toilet and you're getting pins and needles in your legs and you can't get up because you've been on there too long because you're messing, that's a success flag. That is like, wow, I must be on the right track. I must be doing something right. If you're, if you're getting a ticket in the car because you've been caught on your phone and you've seen the lights, successful, that's amazing. I must be, building, I must be building this business to platinum because that's, that's, that, that type of shit, okay, is 
the realness of what you have to, you will be on your final lot. Yes, you can take time out to spend time with your family, of course, and be present, 100% you can do that, but be prepared to, for people to make comments that you're always on your phone, that you're always doing this, that you're doing that thing, and, and just be prepared for that because that means you're on the right track. If none of that stuff's happening to you, then I'm sorry to say you're not on the right track. So get used to being in the, sacri the sacrificial lane. That's just what it's going to take. Okay. And, and the thing is with that, being on your phone, you can be on your phone in the scrollers hole or you can be on the phone messaging people. There's a difference, isn't there? You know, you can be caught by your friend saying you're on the phone too much and you're actually not doing any work but feel like you're busy or you yeah. can be pounding the referrals like 10, 15, 20, well, however many it yeah. is. Yeah. So, I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd be sitting down and, and thinking to myself, like, I'm just going to connect with five to ten people today and just say hello. You can actually, if anyone's birthday pops up in Facebook, you'll see it every morning. It'll say, five people had a birthday today. That's your five. Yeah. Just send a message to them. Hey, hey, guy, happy birthday today. How you been? Good. What's happening? Good. It'll just go through your whole Facebook friends list within 12 months and you'll have connected with every single one of them just from birthdays. And so that's the connecting. And it's, listen, at some point, you've got to have a yes or no decision too. You can't just connect without any, you can't, connect and talk without at some point putting your head above the parapet to get a yes or a no response. You've got to eventually say, hey, curiously, by the way, as we're talking, I, I don't know if you've been watching me on Facebook, but helping a few people get in shape, do you know anyone who, who needs to lose 10 kilos like I did by any chance? And they'll say yes or no or me or whatever. And that's, that's how you do it. Also people who like, like your transformation photos that you post on Facebook or like, you know, power post or anything that you do, if they like it, you can always send them a personal message too saying, hey, thank you so much for liking my post about X, Y, and Z. It's amazing transformation. How have you been? So you can even strike up a conversation that way too. Don't post and pray. It just doesn't work anymore. The algorithms suck. It's just like, ain't going to happen. The end of the yeah. DMs. Yeah. Post and pray. That's, uh, yeah. I think that was like, 2013, wasn't it? Those years? Yeah. Well, we went around then, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somewhere around there, you put a before and after, having it 150 likes. and oh. you know. my, my first before and after photo got like 120 likes, and I got no enrollments from that, by the way. That's how terrible I was at the beginning. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to leave sort of 10 minutes for guys if they've got a question to ask, but one... Obviously, we've talked about the importance of events. SKO is coming up. It's massive. Celebration next year. You know, people need to be preparing for that. But what is one action step that you could give everyone who's on the call or who's watching the recording that they can implement this week? Like one action step that's going to move them towards their goal. And also taking into consideration Fiji. Yeah. That started today. Yeah. Look, that's a good question. The I don't know on, on the call how, what everyone's rank is. There might be associates, consultants, managers, directors, executives. Everyone's going to be different um, as to what they can do to get in action. There's no, you cannot grow your business, I don't think, long term, if you don't take people to events. You cannot grow your business long term if you don't take people to events. Can't. Can't. They're never going to see the vision like you see it unless you take them there. If you're not finding people and getting the vision, it's because you're not taking it to an event consistently. So I think one of the, the best things you can do is start listing out in all the cities, mm. all the people you know, and sending them an invitation. Okay? Saying that if you go to Isidang's ANZ business, I posted something in there today, little thing in there you can use to invite them to an event. And you can say, you know, I, I don't, I feel comfortable with you saying no, but I would feel really uncomfortable if I didn't invite you and you missed out and you didn't feel welcome or something like that. You just, just sit there and list it and invite. And if you go and invite 200 people and 20 go, you'll go exec and you'll go all the way to Fiji and everything. But sit down and do it. Do 200. I would. We're going <laughs> to. So, so go and do it. Go and put them into the cities. It's the first chance you've got. For an event like SKO with brand new products and brand new, like, you know, whole different things coming out, like a whole range of products. And you can, you can get people in Sydney, Melbourne, 
or home. And don't forget too, like with your new customers as well, if they got started on a premium pack, they would have got a $50 event voucher with their pack and a, t a price for the price for a SKO ticket is $50. So they're going for free. So with new customers, it's always about telling them, you know, chatting to them about new product releases and obviously meeting the community and stuff like that. So we invite every single person to an event, be them a customer, a product sharer, a business builder. We hope that our business builders are going to be there without us inviting them. Um, so we really just focus on our customers and obviously our, our sharers. But we were product users before we went to an event. So we always remember that. We always remember that, that we were product users before we went to an event. So imagine if Brooke never invited us, where would we be? So we always come from that mentality when we go and invite customers as well. And the worst thing they, they, that they can say to you is no, and that's totally fine. At least you've invited them. Yeah, invite people that aren't in the business too, or aren't in isogenics, invite them as well. Gold, absolute gold, amazing. All right, guys, have a think about it. If you've got a question, unmute, ask Lloyd and Alicia, go for it. This is your chance. These guys have been epic, so let's go. They won't buy it. I know them personally, they won't buy it. Hey, you guys, how you doing? Hi, Dave, good, good. How, are you? how are you? Uh, I'm pretty good. Uh, yeah, thanks for the value. I just wanted to ask though, what I find quite fascinating between someone beginning, kind of like myself, to the point where you are quite successful, um, there's obviously a mindset shift. Like I understand going out and getting those no's and I'm lucky enough to be in a sales role, so I'm kind of used to that. Uh, but the interesting thing is, when was the point where you, or if there was any point, did you see like a big shift in your mindset to the point where you're just like, okay, it's natural to be taking this amount of action or does it still feel unnatural? Uh, you know, walk me through your changes. Uh, were there specific times that you changed there or was it gradual? The first time it changed was when we did the millionaires in action with Jen and Steve Foxwell and they had directors and above or something on this six week call with Kathy Coover and lots of others. And they gave us tasks at the end of that. And it was to go and talk to 20 new people about osteogenics that week. And that was like, whoa, whoa, it was like way out of our comfort zone. And we had to get on the call the following week and say whether we did that or not, the likes of Steve Foxwell. And that is what made us do it because the pain of getting on the phone and saying no was greater than the pain of going to talk to 20 people. So your brain will go to pleasure and away from pain. And that's what happened on that course. So that was the first time we went into overdrive and that took us to three star. And from there, what else did we do after that to get to the next step, the next level? I think um, doing Toastmasters and doing the UIA events and Doing public speaking, it, I think it's the best personal development. You know, like it, it just puts you in the scare mode so much that, yeah, it's easier to talk to more people. It, it, you just find the fear easier to deal with. Um, and even if you, like, um, you know, if you don't have the opportunity to speak on stage and stuff like that, like Toastmasters for us was amazing. Like we loved it and, you know, I sh I've shared the story before. Like I could even pick up the phone to call someone and Toastmasters totally helped me overcome that sort of stuff and that fear. But even if you don't do Toastmasters and you don't speak on stage, if you haven't done a Facebook Live yet sharing your story, then I would highly encourage, if you guys are serious about this, if you're really serious, I would challenge you to do a Facebook Live, get on the Facebook Live, feel the fear, feel sick, feel like you want to quit and not do it and do it anyways because when you come out on the other side of doing that Facebook Live, you're just going to be like, I'm invincible. I can do this. I just did a Facebook Live in front of X amount of people sharing my story and it's going to make you feel so much more confident, I feel. It's, and it's just you've got to do stuff. People are like, oh, I will only do it when I have the confidence to do it. But courage comes before confidence, so you actually have to do the thing to get the confidence. Um, but another point on that, it's just going back a step. It's 
uh, mastering the basics. So if you haven't used the 30 second story template that's on isogenicsbusiness.com and written out your story using the template, then you just stop everything that you're doing and go and do that because you have to master your story, your 30 second story, be it weight loss, energy, income, you've got to have your story ready to go because if you're speaking to, if you have your story and you know your story and you've rehearsed it and practiced it, if you're out in public talking to someone, you're not going to be afraid to share your story because you're going to know it so well. So it's going back to basics. And then once you've mastered that and you've worked on your 30 second story, you just expand it a little bit, elaborate on it and do a Facebook live and do a Facebook live sharing your story and I swear to God once you've done that and you've shared your story on the Facebook live you're going to feel so much more confident and it's getting your story out there as well so you're probably getting it wrong or two from it yeah so Dave I would um just to answer your question I feel like us personally we we don't wait for anyone else to go first that's been a thing for us. We don't wait for our upline to do something before we go and do it. We just go and do it and we see what happens. So, you know, Lloyd was like the first one ever in our team to do a Facebook Live. And so he did it anyways. He felt the fear, did it anyways. God knows he didn't know what was going to happen. And I feel like you go through that stuff and then it's just like, oh, cool. I overcame a Facebook Live. What's next? I did this. What's next? I did this. What's next? Sort the, of thing. The thing is, Dave, to answer the final part of your question, really good advice to do the Facebook live your team will only do what you do so if you want to be you want you to have a kick-ass team you've got to be a kick-ass person if they, they just are never going to follow someone who's not doing all the stuff you've got to go and speak on the stage you've got to go on, you eventually later you've just got to go first you've got to be the one enrolling you've got to be the one hitting start 1000 you've got to be the one you just got to be the one there ain't no one gonna take don't look for leaders be a leader Go past Greg and Rachel. Go past Rachel. Just go for play. Go. Just go without them. Just go. Like and and just be the leader. Let people follow you. Don't wait for anyone. You know, that's what they want. They want you. They're waiting. What are you guys on here? They're waiting for you to be them. They're waiting for you to be better than them. That's awesome. Thanks, man. And yeah, just if possible, just one follow-up question. Um, your favorite way to invite, would it be more sharing a link, doing three-way call? I'm just curious what you guys like doing. As in when setting an appointment? Yeah, setting an appointment. So it de is this, has someone contacted you through Facebook? Have you contacted, some, contacted someone through Facebook? Like, um, let's, use an ex let's use your latest example of someone that contacted you. Like, what? Okay. Um, yeah, so basically I'm really lucky. I work at a gym, so I have a conversation, talk about their health goals. Great, awesome. Now's not the time to get into it, but if I shared some info with you, uh, would you be open to taking a look? Mm -hmm. Sweet, awesome, great. Um, at the moment, the way that I'm doing it is three-way call. Um, I'm just wondering if it's more prudent to do the three-way call or to kind of use links or videos. I'm just what, curious. What you're doing now, is it working? Are you converting? Are you converting those phone calls to enrollments? Yeah, um, I'd say I've got a real kick-ass dude who's not on at the moment, Adam. He's a really good closer, so that's that's helping a lot. So, um, so if you just keep doing whatever's working. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> How we invite people is we don't um, we don't do three ways ourselves. We just enrol them and support them ourselves. Our team uses three ways and stuff. But but if it's working for you, Dave, like I feel like people, are, they're so quick to try something new. But if, if it's working for you, I wouldn't change it. Yeah. Okay. The thing to inviting is like if you're going to invite them to a sip and sample or an event, the key to that is to say, hey, what are you up to on the 15th of September? That's the very first question you've got to ask them because it commits them to the date before they, you tell them what it is. They can't get out of it. And I'll say, oh, nothing. And you're like, got you. That, you're going to come. That one that. line. That, yeah, we're talking about event invites now and sip and samples, but that one line is so, it's so ingrained in our team and my younger sister's in our team and a few weeks ago she sent me a message. She was like, "Wow, what are you doing Sunday morning? 
and she's just she wanted me to go to the markets with her but the way that she asked me was the same way we invite people to events now she's like what are you doing sunday morning to see whether i was doing something before she invited me so it's Evil. it's really a great way to do it but definitely stick with the three ways dave if that's working if you're getting the people to do it like they're open to doing three ways absolutely 100 percent. Cool. awesome thanks dave Great question, amazing. Hey, we've just come to our nine o'clock, come to an hour, we, we don't want to hold these guys too long, so. Um, I have a question. <laughs> Rach, what, ready. What's that, Rach? Go, Rach, she has a question. No, she's, all good. she's all good, okay. No, um, no, no, three hot, three hot tips for building consultants. You can pump it oh, out. Wow. Um, yeah, it's a really tough one, the consultants. Um, God. It's not tough. You guys are amazing at it. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Look, the thing with good, the thing with building consultants is you've got to be enrolling a lot of people. Mm. You've got to be enrolling five people a month. Okay, enroll five people a month consistently, and you'll be able to stay paid as executive because out of that five, two are going to go consult in a month. And so, how you get them to share is that you give them the post to share on Facebook. You give them the the tools, you invite them to the event, you invite them to a sip and sample, you invest in their life, you follow them first on Facebook and you invest and you invest and you invest and you cleanse coach them. And then you just say, you know, hey, let's share your photo. When someone says they're interested, just pop in a chat thread with me, get them on the phone with me and we'll enroll them. And you enroll your, your first, you enroll their first two, bang, they go consultant, they get paid. Then you take them to an event and they see the vision and they want to get paid again. So that is how we build consultants. We, we get them share their photos in our clean support group. It gives them confidence. They go, oh my God, a little love. And then we say, it'd be amazing if you share it on your Facebook. And they go, yeah, I think I will. And it's just little baby steps like that. And then they get flooded with people. And everybody knows too. But we pretty much hold their hand through it. So we yeah. give them the Facebook post. We give them, we give them what, what to post. Because I remember back, when we first started, yeah. I didn't even know what to post. Yeah. I didn't know what to do back then. So we, yeah, we're like, here you go. You got, a, you got a manhandle. You got a manhandle them. Here you go. This is yeah. how you set up a three-way. So we pretty much just like hand it to them, and yeah. that's really important. I feel though, if you're enrolling enough people, you're going to have just more shots at it. That's, and so I think that where people struggle the most with their consultant building is they're not enrolling enough people to start with, and that's where it's stopping for them. And so focus on that. Like you've got to enroll, we did a little survey in our group, you've got to enroll between 40 and 80 people to go executive, yeah. okay? 40 to 80 people to go executive. So if you're like at 10, don't worry about go and enroll lots of people, okay? Have lots of conversations. Is anyone, does that scare anyone that I just said that? You've got to enroll 40 to 80 people to go executive. It scares me. Oh my God, i go enroll another 80 people. But I think, I think the reality is people need to hear the raw and real because if someone had to said to Rach and I, you know what, you've got to enroll 40 to 80, we'd be like, okay, great, just whiteboard 40 to 80. So the thing is, what you're saying is going to inspire someone who's like, I just want to know what it actually is. Like, what is it? What does it take? Let's go. So, you know, it's, it's incredible. And understand that 80%, of isogenics people that use the products don't share. And that's what Lloyd is talking about is the fact that enrolling enough people to get more of a shot at them sharing because 80%. We, we had this um, person this last month, uh, our, a rank advance we got, and she's three and a half years in. She finally went consultant after three and a half fucking years. Like, uh, it was like going to the dentist. It was so, hard i was like give me the details i'll do it for you like, no, 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 no. You, you can imagine it was just like oh my god I'm wondering. so that, that we still go through that stuff too you know you just got to stay in the game one time anyway. love it yeah love it awesome fiji you guys good luck lloyd and alicia hey guys let's give these guys a massive oh, thank you for having us on yeah thanks, thanks guys. guys love being on you're, you're in great hands <laughs> with greg and rach yeah Rachel's, for sure Rachel's. You guys got a powerful team. Look, <laughs> let me tell you something. There's not many people in network marketing businesses that have a team full of 40 people on, on a Monday night. There's just not, this is not, this is unusual. It's fantastic. But do these guys a good turn because they, I know they would invest a lot in you and pour a lot of belief in you. 
but get out of the blocks after these calls. Every time you do one of these on a Monday and put some tasks together and go at it. Mm -hmm. And don't give yourself the satisfaction of getting on this call unless you've earned it. Okay, don't give yourself the satisfaction of getting on this call unless you've earned it. So put yourself through the paces. Every single week, set a task. I will do this or I don't deserve this call of these people's time. They just, you just, you know, be your own boss. Kick your own ass. <laughs> so good. We'll see you next week. Yeah, we'll see you on Thursday. See you next week. Race does this every this Monday, right. 8 o'clock. <laughs> Race does this all call. Cool. She's just like this. <laughs> she had a freaking e shot at 8 o'clock at night. She's mad. No, she's she's away. Mate, I'm in the Bahamas. Check oh, this out. Okay. Oh, God. oh, my God. Oh, wait. Uh, Lloyd and Alicia have left the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. This is what happens when you go to work in this business. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Rach. 100%. Yeah, but I connected with four people yesterday. I've got four people's emails, phone numbers. The flight attendant, she could not give me her details quick enough. She's like, did you get my information? She goes, I left it there on your seat. She doesn't see her 18-month-old son. Her husband's a pilot. The son has, she's a flight attendant. And guess where she lives? Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> That's how anyway. good business is. Anyone, anywhere, at any time. So, hey, Lloyd, Alicia, love you guys. You guys I love you guys too. Thanks for having me. Unmute your lines, everybody. Yeah. Just thank Lloyd and Alicia. Thank yeah, you. Bye. Thank, Bye. You. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Bye. thank you very much. Bye. Bye.